You know, Tom, there was an Nganu fight this weekend. And we were talking about it on Observer Radio last night. And Dave goes, did you watch the fight? And I said, no. And he goes, I can't believe you didn't watch it. He was baffled. So then he starts reviewing the fight. And then after a while, he goes, you know, I think people are just getting sick of these uh, these freak show fights. He goes, I, you know, I got I got like a dozen friends and they order all the pay-per-views. And not one of them ordered it. And I was like, so why are you asking me? Why are you appalled I didn't watch it? Sounds like nobody, none of your friends watched it. Why are you all over me? I didn't watch this fight. I know it's historic, but like, here's the thing. Yeah, it's historic in the sense that you had an, a 0-0 boxer, an, an MMA heavyweight championship caliber fighter, facing the boxing heavyweight championship of the world, but, like, yeah, I know it's historic, but it didn't feel historic. It doesn't feel no, no one cares about that anymore. They would have cared about it 20 years ago, 25 years ago, 30 years ago, or whatever. But nowadays, clearly, it's not something that people are like, oh, my God, I, if I miss this, I miss a historic event. And that's, I think, why a lot of people didn't buy it. What did you think, Tom, of this fight? Are you mad I didn't see it? It was a spectacle. Well, of course it was. If you enjoy big time entrances, superstars in the crowd, laughing it up, having a good time, watch guys pound each other's faces in. Uh, this was a fight for you. I thought that Naganu at Tell us what you really think, Tom. It was a close fight. Yeah, that's exactly what I think. I think the first and tenth rounds. I'd have to go back and look at the scorecards, but I would imagine those would be the ones that would have decided the fight. There was a clear knockdown, ten eight round in the third for Naganu. I thought that Naganu clearly took rounds seven and eight, and then rounds one and ten. I thought could have gone either way. I thought Naganu watching it live won the first round, and. Then they go to like the copy box numbers and they're kind of contradictory to what I believed. So that swayed my judgment, but I thought live that he won that one and really just proved what we all knew. And that is that MMA is the superior art when it comes to fighting. He used a lot of tricks and tactics that you see in the stand up game in MMA that you don't necessarily see in boxing due to the rule set and how people you know tailor their games to those rule sets where there are a lot of techniques that have been forgotten over the years and we've seen this you know with artem loboff beating Pauli malinaji in bare knuckle boxing a few years ago and now once again it rears its head here tyson fury who normally is able to bully guys around in the clinch and uses weight was himself dominated in the clinch by Francis Naganu. And that's something that you don't, you know, normally see in the boxing world too often. So boxing world at least has a new contender in the heavyweight division. They have a new superstar. They can throw into big name fights as long as he at least wins a few more. So I thought it was a win for the boxing world. I thought it was a win for Francis Naganu, and also it goes down as a win for Tyson Fury. So a win all around, a win for fighters everywhere. Did you watch the MJF Kenny Omega match on Collision this week? No, unfortunately, at the very same time, I was being tended to by the medical staff mm. at New Japan. Yeah. Well, they had the main event on the Collision Show, and it was uh, by miles a highlight of the show. And it was an excellent match. I did not think that, uh, like, Vinny, Vinny was, he, he made it sound like this is the best match he ever saw. And I thought it was great. I think that, like, the MJF Brian Danielson match was, was better than this. But, you know, these are comparisons. I mean, as a match, it was great. And it was interesting in the sense that we got a clean finish 
mostly clean finish. You know, MJF beat him with his move in the middle of the ring. There was an appearance by Don Callis. He came down the aisle with a screwdriver. And I don't know if they made a big enough thing of it on commentary, but they can always, you know, make a big thing about it later. And that is that Kenny Omega seemingly had him beat. You know, multiple V-triggers, grabs the guy's corpse, he lifts him up, he's about to hit the one-winged angel. That's when Don Callis came out with the screwdriver. And so he dropped him off the shoulders, he yelled at Don, MGF tried to roll up, but then Kenny reversed the roll up, and then they kept wrestling. So Don got sent to the back, and he was not immediately involved in the finish. So the way they did it, it wasn't like a screw job finish where when it's over, you think, okay, I need to see this match like rematched on pay-per-view imminently. But, you know, you do have that story in there where there's a decent chance that uh, Kenny Omega would have beaten him. So I don't think they're rematching anytime soon. Obviously, there's MGF matches with all sorts of people, Switchblade and Wardlow and Samoa Joe. You got to go through all of those matches. But, I mean, they did a they did a match where you do want to see it again. Doesn't need to be immediately. Next time can be on pay-per-view. This should have been on pay-per-view. Or, to me, if nothing else, you know, you could have built it up a little bit earlier and uh, had it on that Title Tuesday show when they were desperate to beat NXT. I mean, you could have made MGF Kenny Omega. Can Kenny Omega, you know, beat him and, and retain his record? Or is MGF going to be the longest reigning uh, AW champion of all time. I mean, my first, I would have first gone pay-per-view. I would have second gone title Tuesday with a month build. This would have been my third choice, but it's a great match. So MGF retains the title and he will be facing Jay White at the pay-per-view. And also he has a ring of honor tag team title defense at the pay-per-view. And, uh, they've announced it will be with a mystery partner. It is MGF and a mystery partner against the guns for the Ring of Honor tag team titles. Did this man not call you, Tom, to take out Adam Cole and then uh, and then it all went awry? Doesn't he have your number, Tom? I believe technically he called Tony Khan mm. to make the message. I see. Yeah, what do you me. mean technically? Who called you? I mean, it was you. Did MJF call you or not? Nah, man. Okay, well, then I guess maybe he doesn't have your number. Maybe but, you know... The, maybe maybe it was the devil that called It me. could have been. But, you know, the other option for this ground zero, zero hour match is our own Emmy Award winning Sean Garrett, who has physical possession... Of the other half of the Ring of Honor Tag Team Championship. So I believe that MJF and Sean Garrett versus the Guns on Zero Hour, I think that's as good a match as any. What do you think? I think it's going to be Roderick Strong. And that would make the most sense storyline-wise, in fact. Because Roddy did say, I need to be this man's friend. We've also got MJF and Jay White, Carter Sheeta, Tony Storm, and Christian Luchasaurus and Nick Wayne. Versus Sting, Darby Allen, and another TBA. Tom, do you know Sting? You ever been in the same ring with Sting? Same show? Same anything? No? Darby? You had to have done... Uh, I know Darby. Yeah. Black Label matches with Darby. Right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, what did you think of the main angles on SmackDown... Involving Roman Reigns and your bro, L.A. Knight. And they put over L.A. Knight about as strong as they put over anybody on Roman Reigns during this show. He came out right off the bat, paid Roman Reigns no attention, sat down right at the head of the table. Basically punked out Roman Reigns at the end of the show, hit him with the BFT, stood tall crowd was going crazy they've got a superstar in la night i mean we knew it but now we know that they know it and hopefully i don't know how much further his trajectory can go upward 
you know, he's already in the main angle now in the company, but hopefully he stays elevated up there after this crown jewel match where I expect him to lose to Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns, who got a shout out actually during the Naganu Fury fight after Francis Naganu landed a Superman punch. Really? The commentator goes, that'll make Roman Reigns proud. Wow. And I thought, Roman Reigns stole it from GSP, you fool. Well. I'm... You boob. Who was this commentator? You know, I was watching the show, and I thought they did a great job with LA Knight. They did everything they could to make you think that this guy might win. But at the same time, I mean, over and over, they were talking about how well, you know, it's his first time. First time in this position. First time getting a match of this of this caliber. First time, you know, headlining the pay-per-view or whatever. I mean, they were they were setting you up for, well, you know, he ain't going to get it this time, but maybe down the road we'll see LA Knight as champion. But that uh that first time thing they hammered home. I mean, it was pretty uh pretty blatant, I thought. Letting you know, no big deal if this guy loses this one. He's uh, He's got many more to come. Although he's like 42, isn't he? He's pretty old, right? How old is L.A. Knight? Who knows? I, bl- I believe he's at least 40. He's been around for a while. We, we do have the internet at our disposal. There's no need to he's 40. guess. Dom says he's 40. And uh, he is correct. Actually, what- Dom, 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 you're correct at this exact moment. But you'll be incorrect tomorrow because his birthday is November 1st. Two days. In two days. He'll be 41 years old on November 1st. So there you go. Man, that Dom's quick. Big things at 41, huh? I'm looking forward to some big things at 41. That's right. You're also going to be turning 41. When's your birthday? May. Oh. Well, you're just a young buck. Yeah. I'm going to keep... <laughs> Keep slumming around until I'm 41. Exactly, yeah. How do you feel at 40? 40 was when I fell off the cliff. I feel pretty good the past two weeks, honestly, because I haven't had to travel. I had last weekend off, and then this weekend I was home wrestling. But that'll all go by the wayside after this uh, upcoming week. Why? What do you got coming up? Should I hit your music? No, please. This Friday, I do have a 60-minute Iron Man match against Ron Mathis in Jeffersonville, Indiana for Paradigm Pro. And then next week, 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 I will go on Friday from the Lone Star Shootout, New Japan, in Dallas, to Relentless Pro Wrestling in Spokane, Washington the next night. Not going. To Durham, North Carolina for deadlock pro the next day and then i'll go back home to vegas wow what, what's going on in uh, spokane it's too far away for me to go and i don't want to go over the past too cold the relentless pro title tournament me versus funny bone in the semifinal. excuse me you versus funny bone it's halloween season man not next week hayes versus dragonoff yeah this is gonna be very very short Dragunov ha- has his hair hanging over his eyes. That's what he got out of this match? <laughs> I gave that a 12 on the granny scale. Why? His hair was in his face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what about we get you a, a pen recorder for your birthday? Brian, I got one. Just nobody knows how to hook it up. So you don't have one. You have one that needs to be hooked up. It works as a pen, though. I know. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll help you hook that up. <laughs> That's the biggest joke I ever heard. <laughs> you are the worst grandmother. Oh, my God. <laughs> God. She just cackled at you. Is she drinking that? <laughs> no, she's putting her teeth in or something. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.